Hey you cool cats and kittens, Mr. Murray here on Mr. Murray's Mathland. Today we're talking about uh, concavity and points of inflection. So we are looking to find any points of inflection and determine the intervals where this function h of x is concave up and down. So concavity uh, is related to the second derivative. That's what we're looking to deal with here. And a point of inflection is where the second derivative changes signs. Okay, so let's get to that second derivative. Should be a pretty easy one since we got a polynomial here. So h prime of x is going to be x to the third plus 3x squared. And h double prime of x, the second derivative, will be 3x squared plus 6x. So similar to our process for finding critical points um, to find relative maxes and mins, you know, with all with the first derivative, set the first derivative equal to zero or undefined. It's essentially replicating that same process, but with the second derivative. They don't call them critical points, though. That is strictly affiliated with the first derivative, but it's really the identical process. So this uh, second derivative is never undefined, but where is it equal to zero? That will be, we'll factor out that GCF of 3x x plus 2, we'll have two solutions here, x equals 0 and x equals negative 2. And we provided the graph here so that we'll have a little frame of reference to compare our results. But we want to treat this, you know, we want to solve this as if we had no graphic support whatsoever. So just algebra. So I would get these two points, these two values, and, you know, just like relative maxes and mins, you know, your relative extrema, you're not sure if it's guaranteed to be a point of inflection unless there's a sign change before and after it. So that's what we use the, the uh, sign chart for. So we make a number line similar to how we did before. Negative two and zero, those are our two potential inflection points, our pips as I like to call them. And you're plugging into the second derivative here to see if the second derivative changes signs. And similar, I like to label the top of the number line with h to sort of reflect what that second derivative is showing on h. So when I plug in a value to the left of negative 2 into h double prime, and again, you can plug it into here or the, the factored form or the expanded form, uh, factored form is pretty easy. If you plug in negative 3, uh, you're going to get a negative times a negative here, which makes a positive. So positive second derivative means in this interval, h is concave up. So some people sort of abbreviate concave up. Some people draw a little sort of upwards parabola, you know, typical concave up. Whatever. I mean, the sign chart is really for you to organize your data. Uh, between negative 2 and 0, between negative 2 and 0, if you plug in negative 1, for example, you will get a negative times a positive, and that is a negative, which means you are concave down in that interval. And anything greater than 0, say 1, for example, you're going to get a positive times a positive, which makes a positive, of course. And so you're going to have concave up. So each one of these negative 2 and 0, the sign changed from positive to negative. That is an inflection point. I'm just going to abbreviate as IP. At 0, the second derivative changed from negative to positive, so that is another inflection point. And so it's uh, similar to our relative extrema. We want to find the y-coordinates of those points. So h of negative 2, plugging that back into the original function, will be 1 fourth of negative 2 to the fourth will be positive 16. Uh, negative 2 cubed is negative 8 plus 5. So you will get 4 minus 8, negative 4 plus 5. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. And h of 0, h of 0, a little easier there. Everything drops out except for that 5. So here is our sort of final results, our points of inflection. are negative 2 comma 1 and 0 comma 5. We had 2. 
And as far as our intervals of concavity, our function is concave up from negative infinity to negative 2, as well as from 0 to positive infinity. And concave down in between negative 2 and 0, and that is it. So there are our final results. And I just thought we'd like look at the graph here, just so you can see and make that visual connection with what we found. Negative 2 comma 1. So that would be right about there. And 0 comma 5. Those are our two inflection points. And so you can see that in between, in between those two, that little stretch right there, the graph is concave down. That's where the second derivative was negative. But before and after those, that's concave up. That's where your second derivative was positive. And after that, concavity switched at x equals 0. So your second derivative is positive again. So hopefully you're making the visual connection along with the algebra and uh, just helps to cement the concept that much further, I think. But hopefully this example helped illustrate a lot of little ideas for you. And as always, if you have any questions, just ask.